Hiking is happiness. Uh, going solo today. Going solo today. Going to check out some trails I haven't hiked before. Some small trails up here in the uh, Cascades. Beautiful. So our first little trail is uh, Hemlock Butte. There's going to be some panoramic views up on top. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, mosquitoes are out. Bug spray is on. So come with. Let's go look. The wildflowers are out. How beautiful. Looks like something rooted around there. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Not off these branches. They might call that a mountain beaver. I can't remember. It digs burrows. See the burrows? Really chew stuff up. It's a uh, ground burrowing animal i uh i'll have to do some research but i've come across this before it can really mess up hiking trails <laughs> you just chew them all right up kind of interesting stuff okay let's see what else we can find not a super well-maintained trail. A lot of the uh, brushy stuff is encroaching on the trail quite a bit. But still, fun. It's good to be out. Summer is here. So it's really nice. Those long winter months dark winter months and you think gosh I wish I could be out hiking well you have to take advantage of it when you can so that's what I'm doing and I would like to inspire you to do the same it doesn't have to be a major production it can be walks in the park while, you know, hikes close to where you live. Just a matter of getting out and enjoying. As I tell Susan all the time, attitude is everything. So with the proper attitude, anything is possible. Looks like we have some obstructions We'll have to work our way around. Okay, see you on the other side. Our first decent look of Diamond Peak. And the top of Hemlock Butte. That's where we're headed.
beautiful wildflowers. The interesting thing is, this is almost a no-name hike. Almost a not even worth mentioning hike. And what I'm finding, of course, is it's no less spectacular, though. Look at this. Mount Uran, Uran. It's always a difficult one for me to pronounce. Divide Lake is at the base of that. Oh, this must be a shortcut. I'm gonna stick to the trail and see where this leads. But now I'm up above the trees and uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty cool. I'm glad I came this way. Just beautiful. Maybe that is the way. I'll have to do some reconnoitering. So back in the day, many of these escarpments had fire towers. Apparently this one was no exception because I see a anchor, metal anchor there. You know, that was pretty amazing that they would build a fire tower up on a prominence that's <laughs> so small. Uh, you know, they had to carry everything up here by hand. All the materials, everything it took to sustain somebody living here. Pretty amazing stuff. They were, they were pretty determined. Pretty spectacular. That valley right there goes to the middle fork of the Willamette. And here's the valley I came up. To get up here. Which also goes back to the middle fork of the Willamette. Wow, you can actually see Hill Creek Reservoir way off in the distance. Yeah, pretty amazing stuff. Really beautiful. I can hear the sound of water. There must be a stream down there. One of the, I just discovered something really interesting. Somebody has collected a few nails they found. And some glass. 
when they got rid of the fire tower, many times they burned it. So the glass has gone through fire. And that was part of a window to the fire tower. Many of the fire towers were manned <laughs> by women. And they called them cloud girls because they lived up in the clouds through the summer. Especially during the war, there were, they were all manned by women. So they would be up here all summer long and then they'd have a weekly supply. They, they brought supplies up by mule. The last little bit they had to scramble, carry it themselves. But they had a uh, some sort of radio communication and they had, uh, I'll have to, one day I'll go to uh, one of the active fire towers. There are still a few of them. And I'll give you an idea of what they look like. But they, uh, they would spend all summer. And I've been to some areas where the, the ladies, uh, you know, made little rock gardens and, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Last week up at uh, Substitute Point, you saw they chiseled their names in. If you haven't checked that out, Substitute Point video. And you'll see where they carve their names and people, workers carve their names. And the, the oldest one was 1919, which this year was 100 years ago that that fire tower was uh, at least started. Pretty cool stuff. Hiking is happiness. I have to admit, it's pretty cool being up here. Bit of a scramble. But really cool. I've been here for maybe 40 minutes. And the thing you're struck by is just the, the constant change, the clouds, the sun. It's just changing all the time. Different personalities. It's so cool. <laughs> just a beautiful day up here. Our calling card. Happiness is hiking. So if you come across a heart, someplace unexpected, you never know. We may have been there. This, uh, this trail is, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a scramble. I'm not going to tell you it's not. There is a uh, some points that really get your uh, attention. And it's best to pay attention. So I'll just go down here. This is not a difficult part, but when it starts to get a little bit more challenging, I'll have to stop videoing. Amazing day. So I made it past the tough stuff, which is pretty steep. Definitely gets your attention. In one piece. Now the trails pretty easy through here. Looks like the woodpeckers 
worked on this tree over the years. Yeah, it's hard to believe these trails were somebody's address. Somebody lived up here. Of course, they were in a lot better shape back in the day. But somebody spent all their time right up there. They might call to them, from, like, at one of these flat spots. Hello! They knew their name, of course. They came every week. And she knew that supplies were on the way. She would call back, hello, great to see you. What news do you have? Simpler times, wonderful. Lives lived here. And I bet everybody looked back on it quite fondly. <laughs> 